Becky and Ian Shevling had successful careers with big salaries, but have decided it's time for a change. I feel like I've come home, and I do really, truly believe this is where I belong. They've given up the rat race and moved to Yorkshire. It's just lovely to be part of a family again. While trying to convert a dilapidated farmhouse and barn, Ian and Becky are setting up a new business. But are they taking on too much? We do fight, and we will fight as much as we can, but you get to a point where you just say, right, forget it. You just can't remove it now. I think we're absolutely flaming bonkers, but we're too far down the line to go back. When you think of the Pennines, you think of rolling countryside, beautiful hills, sheep farming. You certainly don't think of a vineyard. But I've come here to meet a couple who have swapped a life of travel, glamour and fast cars for the more sedate world of wine. 36-year-old Becky Shevling travelled the world working as the only female engineer in Formula One, while 35-year-old husband Ian used to run a manufacturing business in the Midlands. But their high-flying jobs meant they never saw each other. They've moved from Woolvie in Warwickshire to the beautiful rolling hills of the Home Valley, overlooking the town of Homefirth in West Yorkshire. As well as seven acres of land for the vineyard, they've bought this Grade II listed farmhouse and barn at auction for £450,000. Ian, Rebecca, hello. Hello. What a me. beautiful spot. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. So why Yorkshire? Why, why up here in the hills? Well, I'm originally from Yorkshire, and uh, I absolutely love it up here. And um, ended up in Warwickshire for about 15 years, and uh, I just wanted to come back, you know, get our own business and be in the Yorkshire area and get out of the rat race, really. Bex, Bex desires, you know, to be here, so... I'm and we had the conversation in our, in our old house, and yeah. he just said, well, what do you want to do? And I just said, I just want to pack my job in, and I want to go up north. So I said, fine. And he just said, right, then, let's do it. <laughs> so the house went on the market the next day. And, Pretty much the next day. And that was it. So you decided to sell up and move. How do you get from that to this? Some girls dream of a big white wedding. Mine was always the farmhouse on the hill with a little bit of land. And your family uh, are very close to here? Yeah, yeah, just over. There's some over that hill, some over that hill and some over that hill. <laughs> How does that affect your, your work life um, and, your, and your personal life? For me, it's, it's a lovely place to live. You know, it's always been very friendly, even when I came up years ago. And the people here are fantastic. It's been a great sort of... Uh... You get me all the time. Yeah, that's true. I see Becky now 24 hours a day as opposed to sort of 24 hours in a month. <laughs> uh, what are you going to call your, um, your vineyard? Well, the, the vineyard's called Home Firth Vineyard. What made you think that Yorkshire was a suitable location for a vineyard? Why not? <laughs> are there any others? Well, yeah. But, well, there's, Where? There's, there's one in York. And there's one in Leeds. Do you know much about viticulture? No. Well, we know how to drink wine, and, uh, but that's about it. So we're on a very, very... It's not rocket science, no, though, is not. it? You put a plant in the ground, it's got good soil, it gets water, it's sunshine, it grows. All the farms around here, they um, all raise sheep, but we want to do something slightly different. Once you've got your vines, do you yep. don't have any... You've got to have vats and presses. In the short term, it's going to go back to the winery in York. OK, so you'll just ship it up? Yeah, we'll... Yeah. we'll Same day. Yeah, pick everything... Uh, and then ship it straight to York. It's just an extraordinary decision. You don't have any experience. Yeah. No. no one grows vines up here, and you're just going for it. Yeah. Yeah. You're either geniuses <laughs> or slightly bonkers, and, and I suppose time <laughs> will tell. There's only a fine line between a genius and it's, a nutter, isn't there? Yeah. So, you know. Ian and Becky have been living in the rundown farmhouse for eight months, but it's the barn that needs the most work. Oh, my word. Look this at that roof. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at the timbers. Yeah, queen trusses. Queen trusses, yeah. exactly. They are, aren't they? And we've opened up the windows. They were all bricked up like they were on the front of the house. So they've all been opened up and the wall's going back up. So there's two sets of three mullion windows to go back in. And how old is this, this part of the house? Uh, we think it's about 1851, don't we? Yeah. And is it listed? Yes, Grade 2 listed. Grade 2 listed, the barn and the house. And the That's house. Right. But we thought that really applied, the listing applied to the outside of the property. Uh, but we've had a little bit of a chop because we found that it's 
very it's much applies to the inside, inside as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's a common misconception that people think just because it's grade two, they're only interested on the outside. But at least with a building like this, they're not going to be as concerned as if it were grade two star, which is better than grade two, or grade one, which means you can't really touch anything. So it kind of could be worse. Ian and Becky have grand plans for the property. The barn will be entered through large double doors, which open out into a double height hallway and contemporary kitchen and living room. A staircase will lead up to a landing with two spare bedrooms on one side and on the other, the master bedroom and ensuite. They will knock through into the farmhouse and create a family bathroom and further bedrooms. Downstairs in the farmhouse, they want an elegant dining room and office. They hope to achieve a perfect mix of old world country charm with a modern high chic finish. Now, you bought the house for half a million. How much have you budgeted for the work? Our current budget is around 60,000 for the house. Realistically, we're probably going to have to put another 30,000 into the pot. I think that budget's a bit tight. How are you going to stick to it? It's not just about um, the elements that other people can do, it's also about what we can do. And the elements we can put into the property, hopefully, will save us a considerable amount of money. Um, everything that we can do ourselves, we try and do ourselves. And what's your deadline? The deadline is uh, March next year. So you are actually doing quite a lot of the work yourselves, or how much are you planning to do? The builders are doing the main structural stuff and the steel works and putting the windows in, but then we'll do everything else that we can. Uh, Around along it. the way, yeah. Mm. So you're sort of site labouring? At yeah. some point. And, yeah. and, but project managing. Exactly, project managing more than anything else. So you're, you're, you're learning on the job. Yeah. And you're running the vines, and you're labouring, and you're project managing. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty easy going then, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> piece of cake. <laughs> you got it easy. <laughs> Ian and Rebecca have got everything that they hoped for. But with juggling a complicated build and starting a vineyard in Yorkshire, I've got a feeling this is going to be a very tough year for them. Becky and Ian Shevling moved to West Yorkshire to be near her parents and to spend more quality time together after she travelled the world working in Formula One. I feel like I've come home. I find it very, very peaceful here. And I do really, truly believe this is where I belong. They're living on site during the rebuilding of their Grade 2 listed barn and farmhouse. While overseeing the build, Ian and Becky are trying to establish a vineyard with 7,000 vines. That's it. That's it. Yeah. If successful, Hofirth Vineyard will be the highest in the UK. It's early summer and their team of builders are hard at work. We've got the steel girders coming in to make the first floor. So we've got two going in, uh, in the lounge to make the bedroom, our master bedroom upstairs. And we've got three going in on the other side to make the kitchen and the two upstairs spare bedrooms. Will you get it done today? Absolutely. I'm hoping to get it done in the next couple of hours. Really? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. If it's all been measured correctly, it'll all be nice and level, and, uh, and we'll have a level floor as opposed to the bed sliding down the side of the room. When, uh, <laughs> Which is when what we've got in. now. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a great test, actually. We'll, we've got the spirit level ready. We've been teasing the builders all week about making sure that uh, the bubble's in the middle. Becky's parents, Martin and June, have popped over to watch the action. Yeah. 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 Just take it that way now towards you. Yeah. So this is the tester. Look at that. Spot on. With the steel work safely in place, it's straight down to the vineyard for the whole family. <laughs> 7,000 vines have now been planted and it's time for the next stage. So what we need to do is we need to keep the top two buds um, and get rid of everything else. So then you get all the goodness going into the two buds. And then leave all the rest. And just leave it, yeah? 
Very good for the bum muscles, this bud rubbing, isn't it? Becky's dream was originally for the farmhouse on the hill, but with the vineyard now, this has become very much more my dream, um, especially with the idea of generating a, an interesting business from it. I've always been business-minded um, and been self-employed for a, quite a few years now. Um, so to do something like this is um, quite interesting. Becky and Ian hope to produce three types of red and three types of white wine, with the vineyard producing 30,000 bottles a year. Vineyards are not at all easy. It's, it's hard work and it's labour intensive. I think it's amazing what they've done. I really do. Even if the vines grow successfully, they won't be ready to harvest until 2010. So to fund the build, Ian runs a business from home. Well, I own a company called uh, Urban Junkie, which is basically a boys' toys gadget um, online shop. And I bought it before we came up here in the hope that it would sort of generate some income. And we've moved here and I'm absolutely shoehorned into a tiny little office now and just about able to still function. All the money that comes in for, um, for Urban Junkie goes on the build and the house and it pays all the living expenses. The money's important, but for Becky, this move home means so much more. Life in Formula One meant she missed her goddaughter Imogen and little sister Jasmine growing up. Well, I've been coming ever since she's, she's lived here. It's a lot easier, isn't it, yeah. to come and see me now? I just like helping with their jobs and stuff. And I like Woody because they like animals. When these two get married, there's a wedding present. We can actually bottle their favourite wine and put their own label on. Sit up. Two hands. Dirty hands, look at them. With the barn starting to take shape, Ian and Becky decide to change the specification and their £60,000 budget rises. What we've decided to do is um, improve the design, uh, put more design features into the property, uh, and by doing that means more cost. The budget's increased um, in the staircase. The staircase has tripled and the kitchen's tripled. We suddenly realised that we're going to be here for a long, long time and that if you're going to do do it, you might as well do it properly, you know. And the house deserves it, you know, it's a great two listed build, beautiful build, you know, deserves it. Yeah, I've got a bit more to do yet. of summer and the build is four months in. The builders are cracking on and they've already built the first floor and the interior walls. It's going really well. It's all uh, coming together now with different trays coming and everything. It's now time for the window frames to be installed. But as the builders tackle the windows, Becky's realising that 7,000 vines take a lot of maintenance. But I hate this job. This must be the worst job in the world. I think we're just both knackered at the minute. You know, you start out with such gusto and enthusiasm and then reality dawns and sugar, you've got a lot of vines to maintain and it's just like all go at the minute. Everything needs your attention. But while they're working hard on both the vineyard and the build, there are exciting moments. Today, the builders are knocking through from the barn into the farmhouse. I can nearly see you. Can you? Nearly. I can see you. <laughs> wow, that's quite amazing, isn't it? As one job finishes, there's always another that needs doing. The window frames now need painting, but at least Becky's parents are on hand to help. Stop it. <laughs> oh, it feels really good to have windows in, minus the glass, obviously. Well, you've got to keep on top of these jobs, because obviously the glass goes in tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna, your jobs are going to be mounting up. I think playing is key. Part of Becky's dream is for her parents to be fully involved in her life again. Well, I've always felt proud of Bex. <laughs> 
I mean, I felt proud of her when she was when she was working for Formula One. But I just feel proud of her for who she is because she's absolutely super. It's very nice to have Bex back because she, she toured the world three times before she was 28. We hardly saw anything of her. <laughs> it's just lovely to be part of a family again, be part of my family again. It'll be nice when you can come round for dinner or for lunch and we can just sit and do nothing because we don't do that, do we? Well, that's the next stage, isn't it? When we get everything done. And Becky's not the only one to rope in family. Ian's dad has come up from the Midlands to help with the underfloor heating. I've got loads of decorating and things to do at home, which I've dropped to do this. They're, they're a smashing couple, they get on well, well together, and as far as how I feel, I'm very proud of both of them. Ian's done a fantastic job. Even if we had a million quid, Ian wouldn't be sat, sat here doing nothing. He'd still be involved, because that's just the way he is. I can be happy anywhere in Yorkshire, but it's, it's important that Ian's got what he needs as well, because he has to live in it. You know, he's moved a long way. He's moved a long way from his family. No matter how hard-working and organised Ian and Becky are, they've still got a tight March deadline to meet. Hey, Terry. Hello, how are you doing? Good to okay. see you. Good you? to Hi, see Charlie. you. Right. Progress. Really yeah. impressed. Have a look. Very nice set of doors. Yeah, quite good, aren't they? Wow, look at this. Look at that roof. Isn't that lovely? Come along, isn't it? Isn't it? Walls. I love this height. These windows look fantastic yeah. as well. I love the little squareness of them. So how, how are you getting on relative to your sort of timetable? Are you on target? Oh, we're ahead. Are you? Yeah, we are. Really? Yeah, yeah. Just because we're pushing all the time, you know, we're pushing the builders, the window men, the, the sparkies, everybody. I'll be doing all the plumbing, but... Um, really? Yeah. We've got all the underfloor heating done, yeah. downstairs and upstairs. We've got all the underfloor heating under us now, okay. so we're halfway there because we've only got the other half to do the cottage. The barn's really taking shape, but Ian wants my help in the vineyard. So we're basically going to hammer in a load of posts and then yep. put on these cables and tighten them up. Spot on. Ian has the unenviable task of putting yeah. 2,000 posts into the ground yeah. to support yeah, the vines. Ow. We're getting in here. Come on, let's get back up here. A bit cracking. Couldn't you have built this thing on a flat bit of field? <laughs> <sighs> up and down, up and down. I'm impressed. He's fit. <laughs> doing okay. <laughs> He's doing fine. So you're here, you're running the internet business. Yeah. You're then labouring around on site. <laughs> yeah. And then after you finish that, you're down here knocking in what? A couple of thousand posts? Yeah, a couple of thousand posts, that's right. Tending how many vines? About yeah, 7,000 vines. The whole project seems to be growing yeah, at incredible I mean, pace. Since we started the vineyard, um, yeah, it's really started accelerating in a direction we never thought was going to happen. The whole amount that we've actually put in here, the whole quantity of vines, means we've had to change our strategy slightly. We obviously have now decided to look at processing all the grapes on site. We want to get a, a good quality wine out of this, these vines at the end of the day. And to do that, we need to have our own processing on site. Uh, Is that vital? It's, it's, it certainly helps because it means you can literally pick your grapes and get them processed straight away. So um, we've decided to look at the investment on that and potentially put it in. We've got to obviously get through planning yet, which is a big issue, but if we get over all those hurdles, it could be fantastic. Their dream for expansion could prove costly, so I want to find out how the build finances are. What was your original budget? The original budget was 60,000. We've gone slightly over that. We will um, be going up to £90,000 for the total budget. Um, things like we weren't planning on putting underfloor heating upstairs, for example. You know, we're just going to use normal radiators, but we decided to um, go with the underfloor heating upstairs straight away. It's a very expensive project. We found it so good downstairs, didn't we? And when we got the guys here and everything, you know, we decided that it would be a lot better. I'm just amazed at the amount you're taking on. Because what I see is that the vineyard, which started as a bit of an adventure, you know, not to be a massive thing, has just gained this enormous sense of momentum. What was your original budget on the vineyard? 
we put 10 grand in each savings and then we were going to see how far we could get with that. But because it snowballed and, and there's so much interest, we're having to look at and getting the planning permission for the winery. It could be seen as a, quite a big gamble. I mean, if the vines just don't produce, we get lots of wet summers. There's always going to be a gamble involved with, you know, putting the vineyard in and the vines and growing any crops. How can 7,000 vines just not work? Because no one's ever grown them this high in this latitude before. You shouldn't have negative thoughts. You should be positive. <laughs> Can't fail. Just like the vines here, this project just keeps on growing. The specification for the house has gone up. The plans for the vineyard, well, they've snowballed. And most worryingly, the build is already 50% over the projected cost and they're just over halfway through. Now, as ever, Ian and Bex are being very enthusiastic and confident, but I can't help thinking that they're significantly underestimating what this project is going to finally end up costing. Ian and Becky Shevling are midway through the renovation of their Grade 2 listed farmhouse and barn in Yorkshire. As well as project managing and working on their build, they're also attempting to establish the highest vineyard in Britain, but it's a steep learning curve. Neither of us know what we're doing, so uh, <laughs> you've got to have a go, haven't you? Such a big project that trying to get on top of either the house or the vineyard is quite difficult. With autumn approaching, all work is now focused towards the barn. But the recent heavy rain has given them their first build headache. We've had a kind of, well, I wouldn't say a flood, but it is a flood. It actually, the water's come in up through the barn. Well, to resolve the, um, this so it doesn't happen again, we're just starting to trench out all around the house. Fingers crossed it'll uh, stop the problem happening again. They've managed to dry the barn out just in time for the arrival of the new kitchen and handcrafted staircase. We've been working seven days a week, you know, this seven o'clock in the morning till whenever we finish at night. And to actually see something, a room that's going to be finished and clean and tidy. But as they progress inside, the heavens open again which means the unfinished drain outside could flood the barn once more. It's just started pouring it down, so uh, we've got a bit of a bit of a flood and we've got to quickly get some um, digging going on to actually start getting rid of this water. But if we don't get it done, we could be in a, in a right mess. And we've just seen the kitchen just started going in. It's going to be a real problem. The plan of attack is to get this little digger, which has just arrived in the nick of time, hopefully, and uh, just start getting a new drain put in. With no let up in the weather, it's imperative the drain doesn't overflow. It's got to work, otherwise, the kitchen's knackered and the staircase is knackered as well. After an anxious few hours, the new trench carries away the excess water and disaster is averted. My little hero! That was brilliant. Uh, really, a really nice end to what started after being quite a rough, worrying day, you know, with the water, praying that it wouldn't come in. Thank you. I feel better for that now. Right, <laughs> it's bonfire night, and Ian and Becky are throwing a party to say thank you to all involved in the project. We've got about uh, 50 people coming. We've got loads of fireworks, we've got loads of hot dogs. So most of the family are coming, uh, and the friends and workmen have helped us here. Um, they are all invited. The guy Fox's head is falling yep. off. Oh. 
It's a fun night for all, but there's still a long way to go before the house is finished. The onset of winter means the vines are hibernating. On the build, the plasterers are tackling the farmhouse. But Ian and Becky are nowhere to be seen. That's because they've jetted to Monaco. It may be time off, but it's no holiday. They've got a previous commitment to fulfil. They run a go-karting team consisting of friends from Becky's old days working in Formula One. And today, it's the annual Monaco karting competition. You know, often people don't get away when they're doing builds and things, and we have been working flat out. You know, we've only been here, what, a day or two, and already I feel completely relaxed and chilled out. And it's nice to get away from the, uh, the farm and the vineyard. It is like a, a mini Grand Prix weekend. It, it, it's very representative, obviously, the used part of the circuit, we've got the pits. We've found that we always need to be challenged, you know, like this, coming to Monaco, it's a challenge. You know, we, we don't just go and sit on the beach. Yeah. That's, that's just not us. Being in Monaco at least gives them a chance to appreciate how much time they can now spend together. We obviously didn't see each other quite as much as most couples would, um, which is difficult at times, but it also brings you closer together. So now, um, now our relationship, we were together pretty much 24-7, is absolutely fantastic. So it's actually made us stronger. Sometimes I do feel it's like it's us against the world. And to have somebody like that is, you know, it's, it's phenomenal because that means you can keep going at 100 miles an hour because you've always got someone to catch you. And I do feel that there's always someone there to catch me if I fall. And I think that, you know, once in a lifetime relationship. That's really nice. I mean, I've told you that before, haven't I? Yeah, but it's nice to hear it. I'm usually drunk when I tell you. <laughs> After a couple of days in Monaco and a reminder of their old life, it's straight back to the business of their vineyard. Their ambitious plans for a winery on site means they need to do some research. Ian and Becky are visiting an established vineyard and winery in Gloucestershire for some expert advice. Hello. How nice are you? to meet you. Becky. Hello. Nice to meet you. Three choirs have been established for 36 years and they now produce on average over 300,000 bottles of wine every year. So to produce the best possible wine then, it, to have a winery on site is, is probably the better way to do processing the grapes. Yes, it has to be the ultimate. The sooner you can get the juice out, the better. We bring our um, grape juice into here. Fundamentally, English wines in general are trying to retain fruit character and therefore, the quicker you get it into bottle, the more of that you're actually capturing. I mean, myself and Becky are both sort of vineyard virgins, so you said it's like not an exact science. How long do you think it's going to take us to sort of really pick up on how to actually make this wine? Well, I've been skills? making wine here since 1988, 89. I've never seen two years that have been the same, and I learn something every year. So I think when you think that you know it all, you're probably in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you use the advice that's around, you'll make good wine. It was a very inspirational uh, trip, I thought. It's nothing that we can't um, achieve, though, I don't think, do you? I oh, know, it's definitely achievable. It's just going to take a bit of time. Bit of planning, bit of time, bit of money. With the March deadline looming, all work is focused on the farmhouse, and Ian's keen to get his new office set up. It's very, very tiring. You know, sometimes I don't even know what date is. We just want to get finished now, and we just really want to get as much done before Christmas as we can. Outside, Becky is recycling the old stone from the barn. This was the um, dry stone wall in course that went on in here for 13 weeks. I absolutely love it. It's really good. Even Becky's dad is working round the clock to help get the house finished. I have cut to the gates, the three gates, the outside wall and um, a crushed stone the yard. Hey! 
Hiya, Charlie. How are you doing? All right, how are you? Busy as ever. Yes. How's it all going? It's going really well, thanks, yeah. What about the build? Is that is that on track? Is that going well? Well, yeah, the build's a bit earlier, actually. You're ahead of schedule? Yeah. How on earth is that possible? We just haven't stopped, to be honest. We just, you know, seven days a week, 12 hours a day, just on and on and on and on and on. And we've obviously got really good contractors here, so they've pushed us on a bit as well. So um, we've, we've got the barn and the house going. So how's the, the planning application for the, the wine making side of it going? Well, we've currently we've put in a, a recent application, uh, but it was um, thrown out on a technicality. We've got to push. It's just proving to the council that we actually do need the winery, which we will do. We need to get it in and get practice to make sure everything works and we know what we're doing and the flavours and the alcohol levels and the sugars and everything else we don't know about yet. And don't we? we need to get going <laughs> with it. <laughs> don't you ever just... Just find yourself going, how <laughs> did we end up in this situation? I mean, I, I think it's amazing, but you know, you've got to go and buy fats. And you, I mean, like, how do you make wine? Do you know no. how you make wine? <laughs> Not yet, but we will learn. We've got a book, we've got to internet. We've got a book. <laughs> well, yeah. So, where's the proposed place for the winery? Oh, it's up there. Come on, we're going to show you. And how big is it going to be? Boy. I mean, go down, yeah. keep going. Bit further. Bit further. A bit closer way. to that wall. Pretty big. Yeah, it's going to be a good size. Better go a bit further down. It, like that? Yeah. Yeah, that way, like it, that. It's going to be around that sort of size. And then around five metres tall and, and dug into the hillside. That's quite big. Yeah. And it seems it's not just their business plan that's developed. The first place is for the backyard. Right. So Becky's like dreams that. for the future are growing too. Ready? Ooh, ooh. Oh. <laughs> so it's, ni it's nice being back up here with you know lots of families and kids around and everything. Yeah, it's great. It kind of makes you want you to have your own, really. And that would be the next step. And the house is done. Once the vineyard and the winery is set up. Think about a family. And then think about filling some of those bedrooms. I'm incredibly impressed with Ian and Bex, who are working really hard. But what's concerning me is this vineyard. They've put an enormous amount of money and effort into this, and there's no guarantee they're even going to produce good grapes. And what's more, without this planning permission, the whole scheme could be in jeopardy. The worst snowfall in 18 years has swept Britain. But that doesn't stop Ian working to get the house finished for the March deadline. Yeah, we're, we're, we're certainly uh, getting on with the build. It's, it's just taking absolutely all our time and all our energies to get this far, but uh, we just got to keep going. The girls have stayed over last night and they're, uh, I think they're busy giving Beck some birthday presents. Are these for me? Yeah. Goddaughter Imogen and little sister Jasmine are visiting. Happy birthday from us. Oh, wow, look at that. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That's brilliant. That's that for my new desk? Yes. Have a lovely day, Becky. Happy birthday. Lots of love. Helena, Julie and Imogen and Jasmine. Oh, that's super duper. Thank you very much. What do you it may be a celebration downstairs, but Ian is losing confidence in the vineyard and winery. The winery looks pretty um, remote at the moment. Uh, the planners just make it quite difficult at the moment. Hopefully they switch on a bit more to it. It's just one of those things, it's a big worry, you know, and when you've invested tens of thousands of pounds in a project uh, and to think that somewhere down the line that you're not going to get what you, you need to actually carry the project through, it's a bit, a bit disheartening and it, is, it's, you know, it plays on your mind a little bit. If we don't get planning permission for the winery, yeah, we've got a real problem. And potentially the whole project could be off. You know, I'm only going to battle so much, you know, we, we do fight and we will fight as much as we can, but you get to a point where you just say, right, forget it. So at that point, you'd have to just dig all the vines up, sell the stock on, and let someone else have a go at the dream.
A year ago, Ian and Beck set themselves the ambitious target of restoring and converting a listed farmhouse and barn and establishing a vineyard here in Yorkshire. Incredibly, everything is finished on time. I can't wait to see how it's turned out. It's hard to believe that 12 months ago this building was a wreck. But Ian and Becky have managed to turn a dilapidated shell into this luxury five bedroom home. Hello. Hey, Hello, Ian. How are you doing, mate? Hey, Hello, Charlie. Bex. How are you? Fine, how are you? This looks wonderful. Are you pleased? Very pleased, yeah. Come on then, show me inside. Yeah, can have a look. Wow. This is very grand, isn't it? I mean, it's very sumptuous and luxurious in, the, in here, but you do still get a sense of the old bar and the old building. And how does it feel every morning when you wake up, you come out of your bedroom and it's, it's kind of done? That must just be an amazing feeling. It's absolutely amazing. You actually walk around and think, oh, we've done this, you know, and, and it's, it's, how, it's how we designed it. Yeah, it's great now, actually, not just the sort of finishing touches, but just having, like, the heating work in the... the, the the underfloor heating's fantastic. You know, that's one of the biggest pluses for me. So, uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy about it's all gone. I actually walk around and think, oh, that's my kitchen, my dream kitchen. And then you go in the lounge, and the lounge is just as nice. Where the barn was knocked through into the farmhouse, there now stands a grand dining room. Becky has blended country cottage charm with a modern finish to create a striking look. Fantastic. The roof is beautiful. I can just imagine lying in bed and staring at this fantastic roof structure. It's a very calm, quiet room. And then your beautiful views. Yeah, the view is special. I have actually officially got view envy. That is something else, isn't it? Yeah, it's stunning. What do you think your secret was in order to keep on schedule? Drive, I think. Drive and determination. Blood, sweat and money. you just got to keep going. It's great now to look at the building and think, you know, we've really preserved the building for hopefully for like the next hundred years. To me, it, she looks like she's smiling again. You know, you, you, you have to give a bonding with the house. And uh, it's like your own personal um, friend, you know, you feel like you've taken her and dusted her down and, and put her makeup back on and there she's all, all cute again. With the house, you managed to stay pretty much on schedule, but what about the budget? Realistically, um, I think we've done okay, but we've spent just on the house um, around 120,000. I mean, in hindsight, clearly the £60,000 budget was, was never... No, it was... We were, no, we were never going to achieve 60000 not unless we just did it on a complete developer's sort of mentality, not spent any money on any extras at all, you know, just gone budget all the way. And we could have kept to that, but we didn't want to. I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's a lot of house that was in very poor condition. Their budget may have doubled, but this was a substantial project and they chose a high-spec finish throughout. That is a special view, isn't it? Over the last year, Ian and Becky have toiled over the land, creating Home Firth Vineyard. But after some serious planning issues, it might have all been in vain. The last time I saw you, the big question mark hanging over everything was whether you were going to get planning permission for the winery. Has that happened? Um, well, at the moment, uh, we won't be granted uh, planning permission just for a winery. Uh, the council wants us to prove ourselves uh, and develop the business further. 
Um, so at the moment we can only take sort of baby steps. We're hoping to get planning for our agricultural building uh, this year, well in the next sort of few weeks, and get that um, put up so we can at least house the new um, tractors and things that we need to uh, start harvesting the grapes. And then hopefully from that then move on and get the uh, winery set up. Are you both still confident about this venture, given that you're one of the, if not the highest vineyard in the whole country? Because when I first heard about it, I thought you were mad. We've been able to do some comparisons now between other vineyards, uh, which is slightly lower down, and uh, surprisingly, we're on a par, if not better. So your vines are growing faster and better than vineyards lower and further south? That's right. Yeah. That's extraordinary. Yeah. But for Ian and Becky, this move wasn't just about a vineyard. How have you found working so closely together this year? Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. This is like hours together, and I wouldn't have wanted to do it without him. How do you feel when you come home, come down the driveway, you see the farmhouse on the hill? It's quite amazing, really. So I've always had that dream. You know, just being a little girl and seeing, you know, the, the farmhouse on the hill and a little bit of land and doing it a barn up and everything. And then now we've actually achieved it. Then there's a great sense of satisfaction, a real inner, like you, that my, my soul is at rest here. This is where I'm meant to be. This is where I feel like I should have always been. And it's been brilliant to, to do everything that we've done, but this is, this is where, this is where your heart is. It's all just worked out perfect. It's, it's like a dream. I often feel like I have to pinch myself, you know, it's like, am I dreaming this? Have I really got everything I've ever wanted? And you think, God, oh, yeah, we have. We have, we've done it. Come on, boy. I've been constantly amazed by Ian and Bex's sense of adventure, combined with their work ethic and organisation. In an epic year, they've planted an entire vineyard and created this fantastic house in its stunning location, really bringing to life Bex's dream of the farmhouse on the hill. Now, as to the success of Home First Vineyard, well, that is in the hands of Mother Nature and the planners. Roll. Next time, the Taylor family swap suburbia for rural adventure in Wales. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Are you ready for this? The egg has landed.